Hey guys, welcome to this new format, welcome to the new class, welcome to this new session. Today, we're going to start with something a little bit different. We've been talking in the team and uh, we want to make a little bit of a change here on the schedule due to different uh, aspects of things that are working uh, behind the scenes. Uh, but one of those is that uh, we want to give you guys something more condensed. Uh, we, we like the, the series that we've been doing so far, like the infected character, the lighthouse and everything. But we know that spreading them out through like so many sessions can get a little bit like difficult to follow. So uh, we're going to be working on smaller, like more concise exercises that we think you guys are going to like. But of course, this is all that or this will all depend on what you guys like uh don't worry we will finish up the the projects that we're pending right now we have two pending projects the infected character and the lighthouse we will be covering those do not worry i'm um i'm gonna make sure we're also gonna be continuing with our portfolio review we're gonna continue with the live streams but the formats are gonna change slightly during the week instead of having daily like short uh, videos throughout the week we're actually gonna have three days with the big videos so right now we are uh, aiming for monday thursday and saturday releases this is of course the first First one on this week this is monday and uh, we're going to be doing a cool project that has to do of course with some of the courses that we've released throughout well, all of this years so um I, I like to think of this uh, videos as sort of like dlcs like free dlcs for you guys so um we're of course going to invite you to check out our courses and if you want to check them out one of the places to do so is of course a skillshare Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. So welcome to the first class. This is going to be the Maya class. So we're going to be focusing on Maya throughout this uh, section. And the, uh, the, the cool thing or one of the things that I like about this new format is that I'm actually going to be teaching you in a very similar way to how I teach my classes here in Mexico. So uh, it's going to be one hour, maybe one hour and a half of content. It's going to be a lot of information. I suggest you take notes. I suggest you uh, write down like special things that you might want. And uh, this is what we're going to start with. As you can see, this is a concept art for like this sort of like cameras, like sci-fi cameras that we can uh, model. We are going to model. And um, uh, let's do this. I want to make sure that we're all always having fun throughout these videos. So I'm going to roll a D4. And let's see which one we get. We get number three. So that means we're gonna be doing this. So one, two, three, four. We're gonna be this one. We're, we're, we're gonna be doing this one right here, which I think it's a cool camera. So um, this is this is meant to be a again. It's, it's the process. It's the whole process. We're gonna do the whole project from the moment you started this video until we finish. We're gonna finish with the modeling of this little guy right here, and we're gonna be alternating. So again, um, let us know in the comments what kind of content you guys want me to do or want me to, or want to see throughout these courses, and I'll be happy to uh, include it on the list. There's a couple of things that people have been asking in live streams and stuff. Believe me, we're taking those into account as well. So let's go real quick to the desktop and I'm going to copy this one right here and I'm going to bring it, of course, to our source images. There we go. So we're going to go uh, to the side view, actually. And we're going to bring in the cameras. I actually don't remember. Look at all these things that we've done throughout this year. We're almost going to like uh, we're almost going to be at the, at the one year anniversary. Give us some ideas of what we should do. Maybe some giveaways would be nice, right? There we go. So cool. So this is the camera right here, the, the one that we're going to be doing. And um, one of the things that you need to understand whenever you're watching a concept is that sometimes the concept artist won't make it as clear to all of the things that you might want to have on your on your element, right? Uh, let's let's dissect this thing into into pieces. So we have the main frame of the camera up here. We have uh, this thing right here, which is like the pivot point. It's going to allow the camera to rotate. And then we have this anchor point right here, which is what like pastes to the wall. So I actually want to start with that thing, with this thing right here. And I'm going to model it. As you can see, we're actually facing negative C on this side, which is fine. I'm going to model it just like we have it right here on the concept. But eventually, we want everything to be facing the proper direction. If you feel um, confused about this, another thing we can do is we can just change the scale, let's freeze the transformation or just call this uh, on C minus 2.243, 2.43, there we go, did it work? Oh, sorry, it was X, 
So minus 2.243. There we go. So now when we see it on the side view, right view, you can see that this thing is actually pointing the side that we want. So what's the easiest way to do this? I would say Quadro. Quadro definitely looks to me like one of the easiest ways to, to make this shape as quickly as possible. And, and that's one thing that I want to change with this new series. I, I know I usually move really, really fast. And I, I, I was doing that for the YouTube videos because I wanted to make sure it was brief and, and exciting and um, entertaining. But for these videos, I might be taking a little bit more time. You might see me going back and forth every now and then, depending on how, how good we move on. Uh, but this is like a, a more realistic look on how things work. So I'm going to start with a, a quad here, just like a normal uh, quad uh, section. Let's push this back. Let's go back to the right view. And I'm going to be using my quad draw to create the profile of the thing first. So I know that this thing is like a square thing, right? It goes all the way over here like this. And then at this point, we have a section that goes in this sort of like angle up here. So I'm just going to draw the section right there. And then on top here, this thing moves forward like this. And I would expect this thing to just like combine itself back probably like well, we can see like a little square there. And there we go. Here's uh, the important thing about this piece is that we need to kind of see where the main shapes are like where we want to have like straight lines and where do we want to have like uh, like other types of lines. So here I'm going to snap all of these guys together, all of these guys together, all of these guys together, this three guys together and this one's together. There we go. Same for this one. So let's keep them straight and that's it. So this gives us a really close approximation of what the artist intended right here. Now we have this like little section like going across, right? So we need to create, I'm going to use again my cut tool and my quad draw. I'm going to insert a couple of lines here that are going to flow into this section right there. As you can see, I added one liner and then I deleted it so that we get a straight line, which is as close as possible to what we have. Grab these two guys. Let's bring them back. They're not supposed to be like that high. And that's it. These things are also seem to be like a little bit high. And this will be my like my base mesh, right? So we have this very nice shape as my as my base mesh. So I'm going to hit control E to extrude this out like this to give it a little bit of thickness. Um, it doesn't seem to be like super, super thick. So something like that. And then I'm going to say shift right click mirror and we're going to mirror this on the X negative axis. Hit apply. That's going to give us two things. Uh, well, actually, before we do that, we definitely need to delete all of the interfaces. Fastest ways to go to the front view. Select all of the intersections and delete those ones. So there we go. So like this guy right here and now we mirror. So that, that way we don't have any like faces on the inside, like non-manifold geometry. And that's it. Like we have the, the base shape of our of our element uh, ready to go. Now I definitely see details that we have here, model, bevels and stuff. And uh, and we need to um, address, address those. So let's start down here. I can see a nice bevel going all the way throughout this border. So I'm going to select all of this border right here. And usually my rule of thumb with uh, bevels is you want to make sure that you kind of close the loop. That's going to save you a lot of headaches because it's going to give you a nice, uh, a nice effect without creating angles. So as you can see, we get that nice little cut right there. And then up here, see those like that, like clean line there, there seems to be like more things going on, like up here. Right? So, um, again, we, this is like a very loose concept art. This is actually the kind of concept arts that I don't recommend as much, but we can use those as, as inspiration and, and give it a little bit of our own, like, uh, of our own effects. So for instance, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to bevel this upper part. There you go. So that's going to give me the sort of effect. Here's a cool trick I like to do. I'm going to sign a new material, just Lambert and, uh, on the, oh, let's delete history on the Lambert color. We can already grab like the like that green color right there. And that's gonna allow us to see like the little like green and stuff. If you change this from a Lambert to like a uh, bling, it's gonna be a little bit more evident because it's gonna shine like a like a metal. Uh, but I honestly like to keep it as a Lambert. So let's do uh oh, just a normal Lambert. There we go. The color is a little bit dark, so I'm just gonna there we go. Cool. So yeah, that's like the that first line. And there that tells me that probably this faces right here 
are gonna have like a little bit of an extrusion and then we're probably gonna have like another bevel over here again just to add visual interest to the piece and then see that little like bump right there what we can do here is we can again grab all of this like back uh, elements flatten them out so that everything is completely flat on the back here I'm gonna add one line and then grab this faces again oh, one two three four control E and just push this up probably bevel this ones as well and that's it I have this nice little like shape I actually kind of like the the sharp effect like that one right there look kind of nice so yeah that's uh that will be that's what I would add like up here for the for the general like effects then uh in, in this section like uh, on top of this element there seems to be like a little bit of a hole that guy right there so I'm gonna use my cut tool to add the little section where I would imagine the hole to be, which is this one right here. Grab both sides, Control E, offset, just a little bit of offset like that, and then Control E, and just push this in. And that's it. I I, I love bevels. I I'm addicted to bevels, <laughs> so I'm gonna bevel the border right here as well, just to get a nice little line right there right now we're getting a little bit of an overlap so we're gonna have to go to the bevels here under the fraction just lower this because bevels are really good to to break up the silhouette so that we don't have like perfectly or perfect 90 degree angles and uh and that's it just it just helps really nicely now here's a circle and circles are really tricky but if you guys have seen our uh hard surface uh, uh course which of course you can check on the links below you know that there's a nice little trick that we can do here if I add a couple of faces like this, I can actually grab one, two, three, four, and there's a tool here inside of Maya that says mesh or edit mesh, circularize. And we're gonna get a circle. Now I'll probably just like rotate the circle a little bit. Let's get rid of the screen rotate so the topology looks a little bit better. There we go. Uh, definitely need to re-mirror this so we get the circle on both sides. Let's go to the right view again. And uh, you can see that the circle is way, way bigger and it's a little bit lower. So I'm gonna grab this, make it bigger, bring it lower. If we need to move all of these vertices down, that's fine because it's a flat area, a flat surface. So flat surfaces are really, really like, uh, I like to call them topology friendly. Like that. Let's go to the right view. I'm gonna grab all of these guys right here. Oh. There we go. All of them, there we go. There we go. Now just make sure that the topology flows as nicely as possible. So for instance, this guy's right here that are way too high, just let's, let's lower them. It just makes for a nicer, cleaner topology. There we go. And now for the magic, we're gonna grab this edge loop, or actually we can grab the faces again. Control E and offset a little bit to create a nice edge loop. And then hit this guy, control E again, and we're gonna bring this in. I'm actually gonna control E again to get the support edge already, and that's it. So now eventually when we grab this guy and press number three, we're gonna have a circle effect right there. Right now we're not adding any other support edges. We still need to work on that. Um, but so far, like that's the that's gonna be like the circle uh, element that we have right there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Th on, on this guy right here, on the right view, I kind of see like a, like a like a break there. It's a it's an interesting break. So I might add just one line right here, and to create that break, we can just grab this guy, snap it there, and this guy, and snap it there. That's gonna create this sort of like elbow looking shape. And then on here, there seems to be like a trapezius kind of kind of shape. So we're just gonna grab this guy and. And keep the curvature, but give it this sort of like trapezius shape. Then down here, that's like a more like straight line. So we can add that line right there. Grab these two guys and R, just to like flatten everything. And that's also gonna give us a nice little break right there. I'm super, super, super tempted to give it a bevel. <laughs> Again, you guys know I love bevels, and I think it's just gonna look way better. 
However, be mindful about bevels because even though they look great for hard surface stuff, they do add more geometry and it makes it a little bit more like not optimized. This one's not supposed to be a game uh, asset, or at least I'm not uh, I'm not thinking that it is going to be a game asset. There we go. And look at that. Nice looking shape. Uh, I do think it got a little bit like thick on this like lower side. So I'm going to push this in to try and keep it the same at the same like distance. Angles are always tricky. So don't worry about it. It's a, uh, it's part of the process. There we go. So now we're ready for the uh, for the support edges, right? Because if we press number three, as you can see, we get this super ugly effect. I'm actually gonna go symmetry on, and I'm gonna say world X, so that all of the like points that I add are added on both sides. So for instance, here on the bevels, I'm gonna add one and two. We're gonna add one right there. Pretty much on any hard surface corner that you want, we're gonna add like one little like section and the reason I am turning on um, what's the word symmetry X is just to make sure that I don't have to do double the work right so one right there one right there probably one right there here we need to be very careful because we don't want to uh, affect the the circle in any way so so we need to be very mindful of where where we place our edge loops. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Now this we have this break right here. Let's do two there and one there. One there and one up here. There we go. That's a weird shape. It doesn't look half bad, so <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. it and we have another break right here so there we go now what I'm looking for is just like uh, some sort of uh, things that might look or make this thing look um, in a weird way sometimes you'll find areas that look like pinched that's what you want to just like double check your topology to make sure things look as nice as possible Here's where actually changing the, um, what's the word, the material to a blin works really well because the blin is really, uh, it's really no, 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 see, is that the word? In Spanish, we call it chismoso. It's always not, not minding its business in it, and you will automatically see uh, where you have like hard surface stuff. But yeah, like this looks pretty good. I, I think this looks pretty good. Um, yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this is a good, a good topology and eventually, uh, we're probably not not on this one, right? This is this is all modeling. Today is all modeling, but maybe in another uh, video we'll, we'll talk about Substance Painter and um, and we'll do like alphas and stuff and uh, yeah, like things things seem to be working quite quite nice on this one. So just to do a little bit of cleanup before we move on to the next section, which is going to be like this uh, base right here, uh, I'm going to grab this guy right here and I'm just going to call this camera support. There we go. Just make sure. Free transformation, uh, delay history, you know, the usual drill. So this will be a good point to start or stop. If you're following along, I would suggest you stop right now and try to do it yourself. Try to get all the way to this point so that you have this very nice base already. And then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so let's go. Uh, I'm going to go right view again. And uh, before I do this, I, I like to do a blocking. This is not something that I do all the times. Sometimes I just go and start modeling. But blockings are really, really good because they give you a nice idea of the volumes of things. So for instance, here, I know that the volume of the vase, at least the main body of the vase is about this big. And then the volume of the lower part is about this big, right? So I know those are gonna be the volumes. And then the camera, as you can see, it's like a, like a bevel box. It's like uh, if I grab like this sides and just bevel them. So that's roughly the, um, the shape of the camera, right? Right now the camera, as you can see, it's facing forward. One thing you can do, for instance, is you can go here. I'm changing the rotation, of, of course, and I'm gonna scale it down. I'm gonna scale it on X and then on C. Just to kind of like get the shape and the volume like that. So I know that that's roughly the size of the camera. And then just go back to rotations and zero them out. And now the camera is gonna be facing uh, forward. 
as you can see here, the base of the camera is like back uh, there. So we'll be like about there. And that's it. So I know that eventually, once we finish like uh, setting everything up, this is roughly the volume that the camera is going to have. Okay. So I, I like to have this block in just as a reference sometimes. I'm going to create a new layer here. Call this um, camera reference. Just hit save. And we can turn this off. And if we need it, we'll bring it back. Cool. So this is a fun piece, uh, this this next one. And um, again, we, we rolled the dice. I haven't done this one. So that's why I, I like this new format because it's a little bit more free form, uh, more like a, uh, just, 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 just completely free mode. So the thing with this one is cylindrical shapes are really tricky for support edges because when you're working with cylindrical shapes and you add a support edge going vertically, it changes the form of the, of the cylindrical shape. Let me show you real quick. So let's say we have this, right? And normally if we want to create like a hard surface detail, like let's say we want to grab these guys right here and we want to extrude them in like this. And you're like, okay, yeah, that looks good in, in, in number one, right? But if you do number three, that ah, doesn't look so good. And you can say, well, why, why not just add a couple of edge loops like up and down, right? And yes, that's going to help. It's not going to be perfect. Now, if I add more edge loops, for instance, on the, on the horizontal side, then the top and bottom areas are going to start looking really, really nice. But the side areas would need me to add like a couple of this lines over here in order for this thing to look as sharp and as nice as possible. The problem is you can see that it, it affects or, or it, uh, it contaminates the, the upper parts of the cylinders. So there's two ways to fix this. First of all, this is one of the tricks that I again show in the hard surface model course, if you want to check it out. Um, one of the things is we can stop the flow of topology by deleting the, the flow like that. And that way, once we, for instance, collapse all of these guys, Yes, we're going to have some triangles, but we're no longer going to have the any issues like on the bottom part right here. And the other one, which I can't do right now on this one, is to start with a really dense cylinder, which is the one that I'm going to recommend right now. So instead of starting with like a 20-sided cylinder, we're going to go for a 40-sided cylinder or even like a 50-sided cylinder. And yes, this is going to be heavier. This is going to be more geometry, more intense, uh, but it's also going to give us a cleaner, cleaner result. So I'm going to bring this right here. Grab the object, scale it down, and let's go here for like the base. There we go. So uh, what I'm seeing right here is that we have this section, and right there we're gonna have like this big like screen, right? Like maybe that's where the battery is, or where the main board is, or where the memory is. I don't know, but it's just just sort of thing. And I think we do need to model the hole on this area, but the main shape is gonna be like a separate piece, just so that we can like open and close the door if we need to. So I'm going to add one line right there and one line right there. And as you can see, we already have the line, which is uh, that one. So this section is the little section that we're going for. Control E, offset, Control E, and uh, we push in. Control E again to create the support already. And there we go. So that's going to be like the section. And now, as you can see, we can very easily add one support edge up here and one support edge down here. And that's going to really keep it sharp, right? Because we already have all of the support, like the vertical support edges helping us hold the whole uh, element. Let me save this real quick before this, uh, <laughs> before this crashes, because you know, 3D, you can never trust Maya enough. Now for the actual like little uh, hood or the little like, like plate or whatever, I'm going to select all of this faces. I'm going to say edit mesh, duplicate, and just push them out a little bit. And then I'm just going to extrude this and do something like this. Again, the little like uh, element. Now, the pivot point of this thing, of course, is going to be on this side. So I press D there and move it. So that when we move it, we can do something like this, right? So let's go to the top view. And the pivot point is going to be right there. There we go. So again, when we rotate this up or we open this up, this is where the object is going to rotate from. Of course, if we press number three, this is going to look awful because we don't have any uh, support edges. Uh, for this one, easiest way is just to uh, insert edge loops like one, two, three, and four. And on this side, we're just going to be missing one, 
and down here too. There we go. So now we're gonna have a nice sharp effect. And again, later on we can add like a sticker or like something on this on this thing, and that's gonna be the little uh, element. To be honest, to be honest, since I'm a little bit of a perfectionist on, on certain things, I would like to add one cylinder to be the hinge. So let's grab these two guys. Let's go top view. So I would like this thing to be the hinge of the door. So it's going to be right there. Make it thinner, of course. Push it up. Maybe a little bit thicker. Just keep it as like balanced as possible. Like that. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. And now these two guys, we're going to combine, actually. This guy, we need to give it a couple of bevels. So I'm going to give it one bevel. And then to the new edges that we created, those two guys, I'm going to give it another bevel. Small fraction, two segments, and that's it. A nice, clean, uh, like, hinge, right? So again, we go to the top view. And then we're going to move the pivot point. So this thing is right there on the, on the center of the cylinder. And eventually, eventually, if we uh, were to animate this, this thing would open whoop, from there. Like this. Way more available, right? Now we'll probably, again, if we, if we take this into rigging, for instance, uh, we'll probably like um, limit where this thing rotates. So it will probably rotate all the way until like there. Uh, and then you access all of the components here and then you just close it back anyway So that's the that's the the main uh, shape right there now We go back to the right view you're gonna see that this thing goes down and creates this nice little like again It's just like some sort of support, right? I would guess that most of the like the turning point of this thing It's uh, like up here like probably all of the engine or whatever it's inside of this thing. So you're actually going to pivot point from this side and this, like all of this basis is still going to be like a uh, pretty much static. So I'm going to go to this guy right here, grab all of the lower faces, control E, push them down, scale them in, control E, push them down, control E, push them down, control E, push them out. So you can see that one's a little bit too dense, so I'm gonna control and click on the on the green square. There we go. Now here again, the artist might not have like uh, what's the proper word. He might have just drawn things to to get the concept across. I would expect this thing to be like pretty straight. Uh, I do like that nice little cut that we have right there, so I'm gonna add it. And to do that, I'm gonna go again to the right view, and if we go here to this vertices, for instance. We can move the pivot point of the vertices to the first vertice and just rotate this up and then scale this out a little bit because we need to keep the lines as straight as possible. You can see how the pixels there are giving me the straight light. There we go. So that's that's as straight as we can get. And that's gonna give it that, that nice like break on the on the on the element pretty much. Uh there's gonna be like a nice like mechanical curve to be honest. And uh, yeah, now uh, we just like add a little bit more details and stuff to this piece and, and we're good. So for instance, this whole thing, of course, we're going to bevel like that. It looks pretty, pretty nice. Uh, here and here we're going to bevel. I'm going to give it two sections or two fragments, two uh, yeah, segments there. Over here, we also want to bevel this one and this one. Now, as you can see, there's like a black line right there. So I would expect some sort of like detail or something. So I'm just going to add one of these lines. And I don't want this whole thing to transfer like the, the uh, uh, this like curvature. So I'm just going to straight uh, straighten this guys up. Grab this guy, control E. Offset out a little bit. And then grab these two guys and, and bevel them. You know, the usual. So when we smooth this out. We get a nice little interesting detail there. I'll probably add another another element oh. right there.
there we go. Uh, down here, I also want to add another couple of bevels. So like one there, one there, one there. That's going to help me like keep this nice section as sharp as possible. There we go. I'm not sure about that line right there. It looks a little bit wonky. But it, like from the side, it looks okay. Like that, that shadowy there, I don't love it. Uh, but it's part of the concept, so I'm going to keep it. The other thing would be to like re-topologize and everything, but I, I want to keep it keep it simple. So over here, I definitely want to add something, because usually caps are very boring. So oh, careful, see this? We have an extra line right there. Control delete always, control delete to delete your lines. Control E. Let's offset this, control E again. And I'm just going to grab like this guy, push it in and give it a little bit of an offset. And then, of course, ooh, there we go. Of course, bevel all of these things to segments in a small fraction. And there we go. So that way we have like an interesting thing right there, right on the on the bottom side of this vase. Let's assign the same material that we're using, this uh, Lambert uh, or Blin one. I don't know what it is with colors and materials, but once you add them to the elements, they really, really like make things pop. And I, I love that. Uh, now, for instance, this thing, I would expect it to have some sort of like handle or something. Like uh, you can see like a weird shadow there. So I'm probably gonna grab like this face right here, these two faces, control E, offset a little bit, and then control E and just push them out. You know, just to add like a like something. <clears throat> of course, this is like way too weird. So I'm just gonna add one more like support edges right there. That's it. Like again, some sort of like thing that I can actually like use to to open this thing up, right? Like a mold line or something. That's it. It also makes it look way more interesting. So that's always a plus. couple more support edges and there we go so all of the things that they can add a little bit of like visual um, I like to call it visual interest it's uh, it's good then we have this other th section and and here's where things can get a little bit tricky because um, our logic would say well yes this this thing continues right from this same section but see how the cylinders are no longer the same I would argue that for cases like this sometimes an overlap is is a more like efficient and it, it makes things look a little bit better as well so what we can do is we can just add a new cylinder like this. Let's get the proper size. And, and this one seems to be displaced like slightly like back. So I'll probably like make this a little smaller so it fits inside of the, of the profile of the previous cylinder. But I don't want this previous cylinder to do this. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, is there a way in which we could just like uh, do the same thing? Yes, we could just extrude the face up here and then displace it to the side, similar to how we did that in the Coca-Cola can on the hard surface course. And um, and that could work, but I'm a little bit worried about like the flat or kind of like flat face that we have right here. So I, I kind of want to do it here with, the, with this cylinder. So with this cylinder, I'm going to grab six faces. And with my R key, I'm just going to flatten them up like this. And since this is a, a lower poly version of the whole thing, uh, it, it might be a little bit easier to, to manage. Now, I'm going to show you a trick here. I'm actually going to delete the, the caps of, the, of this new cylinder like this. And uh, we're going to bevel. Or actually, no, we don't need to bevel it. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, guys. Control E. And we're going to extrude in. As you can see, this creates more like a, like a traditional cap rather than the triangles that we usually have. And uh, eventually, this thing we can just like poke it and, and that's it. But before we do that, I'm actually going to like add a support edge right there. Grab these two guys. Bevel them. And that's it. So now when we smooth this, we get this nice little shape. We have something the plain material. And yes, even though they're two separate pieces, uh, they, they create a nice, interesting... Uh, like a union right here. Again, uh, I know that right here everything is supposed to be like complete, but 
I don't think we're gonna be able to make it simply uh, like that. So I'm gonna do something like this. I'm not sure. I, that, I'm not sure if that's a shadow or a hole. That's the problem. So yeah. Now to fix this cap right here, very simple way. Just grab this whole thing. Say um, edit mesh. Sorry, mesh fill hole. Grab the face, mesh and poke. Or sorry, uh, edit mesh and poke. And that's it. That's gonna create a nice little uh, solid section again. The the bottom part is empty, but unless we um, open this up, uh, we're not gonna see it. Like not even if we open this thing up, we're gonna see it. So, so we're fine. I do want to add a little bit more details to this thing. So, for instance, I can see that there's like a like a little bit of uh, like that hole right there. So, like, I don't know. We can go crazy. Let's offset this and create like a little window, probably. Like that, I guess. And then just add support lines. Yeah, I mean, I guess that Again, that's a little bit of visual interest to the whole thing. And we're not contaminating the cylinder, so so we keep it we keep it clean, which is always good. Now we can even go to the top view, and if we want the cylinder to be a little bit more cylindrical, we can grab like this vertices and just scale them out and bring them forward. And that's gonna give me a little bit more of a cylindrical shape without affecting any of the other things. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's it. Now I do see the main like rotating thing here so i would probably probably like to have the the section so i'm gonna hit Control f11 Control e offset this just a little bit and i'm gonna say mesh let's see if circularize works okay it does work it kind of works it's creating a little bit of an issue there due to this elements i'm gonna show you a trick here we're gonna grab this three guys and just collapse them or again, just grab one, two, three, and just merge to center. That way we don't have any extra polygons going to the center. And we should be able to grab this, control E, offset, and now we can say circularize. There we go. Uh, oh. I'm gonna use a little bit of twist here and to kind of get this thing as straight as possible. 12 seems to be the, well, like 12.5 seems to be like the magic number. There we go. And now we just like make this smaller, right? Control E, bring this down. And that's gonna be like the, like the place where I would expect the, the roth, the moving roth to, to go. Just to keep this cleaner, let's go in there. And that's it. So we have this big section now. Let's go for the for the main like before we do the camera. Let's do this like main motor right there, which seems, seems to have like three 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 prongs. I don't know. It's a little bit complicated, and that's the problem with working with such a abstract concept that we don't know a lot about the the elements. Like I know there's a cylinder. That's a <laughs> that's a given, right? So I'm going to go to the to the front view here. And we're gonna get the cylinder. So I know that we have this cylinder right here, which is the cylinder that moves everything. And uh, it seems like my circle is a little bit small. Very easy way to fix this. Just R and Control click on this guy until we get the proper size. I'm actually gonna push it. As you can see, it's not like on the center. It's a little bit more to the back. So, so there we go. That thing is gonna be hugging the main like a rotor of the of the thing. So this is the thing that's gonna be like moving. Now it has this like sort of bands or something. I'm not sure what those are to be honest. I'm gonna duplicate this guy because you can see there's like a like this black thing. Seems to be like a bigger cylinder, kind of like the base. So I expect this to be something like this, like a main support. But I'm not sure what those are, like those like lines. I'm not sure if they they rotate with the with the cylinder as well. Like maybe there's like an extra like channel and those are like supports for this thing, probably. So <clears throat> again to give this a little bit more visual interest, let's do a nice bevel there. And then all of these elements we're going to bevel the small fraction to segments. It's going to be like the 
like the main support of the thing and this is like the actual rod that moves everything as you can see i did them as separate pieces just to have like a really hard angle right there in between the two there's it's no problem really let's grab everything and just clean things uh very quickly because it seems like we have a lot of stuff and now those guys right there again i'm not sure what they are sometimes uh concept artists will add things that look cool but don't serve any like particular function again i kind of see them as like the support plates or something maybe it's to give the the head of the camera a little bit more like stability so i'm gonna like do them like this i guess i'm gonna change my skill to object mode just bring this in i really don't want to make the hole like bigger so i'm kind of gonna like anchor it to the to the center and maybe they're just for support like this i'm definitely gonna bevel them to have like nice edges there i don't know i kind of like want to push them out because i don't i don't want to like that that looks a little bit better even if we need to even if we need to like make this hole slightly bigger So they can slide like nicely and not touch the edges. That seems good. Now, um, I do see that there are three of them. So if we grab a cylinder or any circular thing um, and we move the pivot point to the center, let's first transformation first. So I'm going to press D and move the pivot point to the center of the, of the main cylinder, which is that one right there can be any of this ones actually I mean oh I'm gonna grab these two guys let's go to the top view there we go so now I know that this thing needs to be aligned with this point snap to point and uh, if oh, if we grab this guy hit ctrl D and rotate this 120 degrees we're gonna get one third and then we do this again ctrl D 240 degrees and then we're going to get the second third. Grab all of these pieces and probably just combine them. And if we center the pivot point, as you can see, it should be the same. Like, things shouldn't change. And that's it. That's going to give us... I mean, it's a really nice graphic shape, to be honest. Like, those empty spaces that we see there, and we, you see the silhouette, those are some really nice graphic shapes. I don't think it makes sense from a from an engineering standpoint. Uh, but yeah, you know, sometimes in games we, we just do crazy stuff, right? So, yeah, that looks good. I like it. I think this is very common. Uh, I think we can add like one section line right here and look at this trick. I'm gonna go to the right view. I'm gonna grab like this face right here, or this edges, just push them up like that. And then I'm just gonna see control E, sorry, bevel to create a nice little line right there. And then just control E and push this in. So now when we smooth this out, as you can see, we're going to get a nice cut. I don't know. Kind of works. Looks interesting. Not sold on it, though. So I'm going <laughs> to actually going to bring it out. You can also add that kind of stuff on the on textures as well. Cool. So let's add the same um, bleed material to everything. And look at that. Not bad, right? Not bad. Things are looking quite, quite nice. Uh, let's do a little bit of cleanup because we haven't done cleanup. So for instance, I know that all of these sections, like all of these pieces are gonna be the same. Or, I mean, they're gonna move in a similar way. So I'm just gonna combine them. This thing is already combined. So this is gonna be like a support or camera, support door. Sorry for the, like the text that we get there. It's the, is the, Karnak thing that we use camera support. Let's delete history first transformation. Like these are extra cameras that I created by mistake. Let's just delete them. Um, these are the preview meshes, I think. And let's call this camera rotator. And that's it, right? So camera rotator one, two, and then these are. Oh wait. Um, Actually, this is going to be camera rotator. Let's call this support. And this is going to be the actual camera rotator. That 
there we go cool so yeah this is probably i would say the end of the second part uh which is the the support of the camera i think we're in a really really good position things are looking nice and um we're now ready to move on to the camera so again if you want to pause the video uh do it yourself try it out and um and, and just keep uh, working with it uh then you are welcome to do so now we're gonna go for the camera and the camera is an interesting shape because it seems to be made out of a couple of um a couple of sections of course the cables are really easy i'm gonna show you a nice uh trick for those but up here it's a it's an interesting thing that we have so so let's let's work with that now here i think i am gonna use this piece so i'm gonna duplicate this and i'm actually gonna delete all of the other ones we don't need them anymore and i'm gonna start with this shape because it, it's really close to the to the shape that we want to go for It has this sort of shape here, and uh, and as you can see, this is like a hood, right? It's like a little cap that goes on top of the arm. So we're probably gonna have like two separate geometries, and then we have this nice little bevel here. So I'm gonna grab this face, and I'm just gonna bevel it, and modify the fraction a little bit so that we're closer to to the concept. This one seems to be going a little bit deeper, so I'm just gonna push it uh, on the C axis, and there we go. So yeah, that's the that's the general shape. Back here, there seems to be like a cut. Like it's not perfectly square, so uh, I'm going to go to the right view. I'm going to use my cut tool and just cut across like this. And we can play with the with the depth here as well, like that. We need to go uh, that because since there's angles, um, the quadro or the quad uh, cut, it's not going to work as, as intended. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Engines are not a problem. Now let me let me do the hood real quick. So I'm gonna grab this guy, this guy, and this guy. I'm gonna say mesh tools or edit mesh and duplicate. Push this out a little bit like that, and I can see that the hood has this very nice like this this like little like wings on the outside. So I'm gonna add one line right here. Grab these two edges. Control E and extrude them. like this and then this vertices kind of go back like this guys to create that sort of like ramp right there now again here's where where things get tricky because on this side it looks like this thing is like coming out and creating this nice little hood and on this side it looks like it's part of the shape so like ideally we would have the the concept artist and he'll be like oh no no this is why i intended this is what i want etc etc uh for instance these guys look a little bit like weird to me so i'm gonna probably like scale them down and get them closer to the to the angle of the of the camera like this and just a little bit of my, my own <laughs> my own little uh interpretation so i'm gonna hit control e to extrude the whole thing give it thickness like this that looks really nice. I like it. Um, it it kind of looks like the upper part is like going further out. So I might want to like push this out a little bit. Now I like it following the shape to be honest. There's more like of, of a curve there. So I'm not sure if like doing this and this well. Is that better? I think it's better. There we go. And uh, now, since this is a simple shape, to be honest, I'm just going to bevel the whole thing. Like two segments and just like a nice little clean bevel. So when we smooth this out, as you can see, it just holds very, very nicely all over the place. Uh, there seems to be like two shadows there. So I'm not sure if they intended to like extrude like another piece right here. And give it like another support. I don't think I like it, to be honest. I think I'm going to keep it like this. And then if we need to add more details later on, I'll add them uh, with textures. I like this like break back here. And back here, I don't see it, but I would expect to see some sort of panel. So I'm going to use my extrude offset and then another extrude to create like the connection place for cables and stuff. Let's do another extrude to create the support edge already and another extrude to give it a nice uh, edge right there. And that's it. So that's where what I would expect like uh, back there, right? To have some sort of like elements for the for the whole thing. Uh, now on this side panel, we have all of those little triangles or 
like hexagon shapes. And that's tricky because we need to decide whether we want those to be model end or whether we want those to be, um, what's the word, uh, texture, right? The problem if we model them in is that we're gonna have to uh, separate this piece. So we're gonna have to separate the, the, like the side panels of, the, of this thing. And it's gonna be a lot of geometry. So like a lot of geometry too, to make sure that they like fall into the into the same place. So probably just for this one, since we're not doing like super high def stuff, I'll probably just stick to leaving them just like that. So, so we're probably gonna deal with those in, in texture. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise it's just gonna be <laughs> a little bit too much for this one. It will take us a, about, I would think, I, I think it will take us about 20 to 25 minutes for those ones uh, to model them. I'll show you how to do it though. I'll show you how to do it here. So if you wanna do something like that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a plane. You're gonna rotate this plane 90 degrees so that it's facing you or minus 90 degrees, there we go. And then you're gonna grab all of the vertices and you're gonna say mesh tool or sorry, edit mesh, and you're gonna uh, poke, no, not sorry, poke, uh, chamfer. And on the chamfer, you're gonna get this 2.5. And this is gonna give you like a diamond shape effect. Grab everything, and you're gonna say mesh tools, or edit mesh, and you're gonna do, ba -ba -ba -bum, sorry, edit mesh, merge. And now this is the, like the shape that we want, right? So if we count how many of these guys we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's two rows of six. So I would select one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then shift select everything else, delete. And this is your shape, right? Now to get this thing to work as holes, I'm gonna grab all of the faces, control E, keep faces together off and offset them to create this shape right here. And then control E and just like extrude them in like this. Now, these are supposed to be holes, like like bending things or something. So I would probably delete that before the extrusion, like keep faces together off, extrude this, and then just delete. And this is the shape that we want, okay? So the problem is we need to uh, get this shape in here, right? Oh, let's go right view. So for this to work, we will need to like find the, the proper size which is about there. They're facing forward, so let's rotate them forward. And now we need to like find the topology that is gonna give us the proper like uh, element right here, right? So it is tricky, it is tricky. Another thing we could do, I don't love it though, but I think we might end up doing that one is uh, booleans. We could just like boolean these things and, and create the holes. But the problem with booleans is that they're not gonna give you the best geometry. So that's why I, I think for this particular case, we're gonna leave it like this and we would eventually like uh, add like a decal, like maybe they're just like stickers or something. Um, and, uh, and yeah, because yeah, it's, it's just it's a little bit too much. It's gonna take us a little bit longer than, than, the, than what I would like. So offset here, just give it a nice little lip there as well. I know we don't see that on the on the concept itself. This is one of those pieces where I would probably not use like number three. I'll just keep it like a super smooth with only like bevels and stuff. And uh, and that's fine. The, 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 don't think that you need to do subdivision for everything. Sometimes you can keep things, um, what's the word, just with like bevels and stuff. Even for like movies, like you don't have to have uh, like bevels all the time. So like this one right here, I think it works really, really nice and it gives this very like, uh, uh, military, super like intense uh, look to it. So now for the lenses, um, we have one big lens right there. So I'm gonna go with a torus. Bring the torus right here. Rotate it 90 degrees and change the subdivision height to something like a four. There we go. Change the radius change the section radius, change the radius again. It's a relatively big lens, so something like this. Maybe a little bit more section radius. There we go. And just get this in there. 
something like that. And I definitely am going to bevel all of the edges right here and just bevel. Small fraction to segment, so when we smooth this with a really nice like lens for our element, like that. Yeah, I like that one. So this, of course, are going to be uh, the blend, the green, and but this one's going to be black. So I'm going to sign a new material, and we're going to sign a new uh, blend, and let's make this like a dark blend. There we go. And of course, we're going to have the lens. Now, uh, these lens are, as you can see, flat. Uh, and I know that there's cameras with flat lenses, but I've always thought that like round lenses are way, way nicer. Here's a quick trick. This is a little bit of an advanced trick, but if you want to make sure that this sphere is exactly where the lens is on the center of the lens, select one, select the other one, and we're going to say rigging, constraint, point constraint, and this is going to bring it all the way there. And now you can delete the constraint. So it's a really nice way to, to do it. There we go. Just flatten this out. I am going to keep the whole sphere because eventually when we add like proper materials, we want this thing to be like glass. So let's assign a new material for now, just an, uh, another blend. And let's do this like dark blue. Maybe we can sample the exact blue. There we go. So that's gonna be my, my lens right there. And now as you can see, we have two little like extra lenses there. So I'm gonna grab this guy, Control D, just make it smaller. Not super small, but it's about like there. And selecting both, we're just going to mirror them to the other side. Now, just to make things a little bit more interesting, I'm going to change a new material here. And let's grab the same blue, but change it to a red with hue. There we go. That makes it look a little bit more interesting, right? So, yeah. Now, um, I do think this is like kind of made out of... Uh, What's the word? Like plates. So I'm not sure if I want to like grab these two guys, for instance. Now, now I'm, I'm now I'm tempted to do the boolean thing <laughs> because I'm gonna show you a nice little trick here. So let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm gonna grab these guys, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to modeling. I'm gonna say edit mesh, and we're gonna extract them. So now they're two pieces. They're two separate pieces, right? Like two like little small plates right here, both of them. So I'm gonna grab one of them and delete them. We don't need it. I'm gonna grab the other one. And what I'm going to do is I am going to um, go into face, extrude the face, and offset slightly, just a little bit, just a tad bit like that. And then shift select everything so that we're only left with this face, which is going to be slightly smaller, as you can see, than the rest of the, of the element. Now, why am I doing this? Because now I want to grab this face, control E, offset it to get a nice edge loop like this. And I can grab this face and just push it up a little bit. And that creates a nice little effect where I can push this thing in and it's gonna look like this thing is actually like supporting the whole thing, right? That's one option. The other option is let's go back here before we did the extrusion and just like control E and extrude it out. And since we're not gonna be smoothing any of these pieces, it is gonna look like it's just a big plate. I'm gonna bevel it though give it a small fraction. And that means that probably we do need to extend this thing just in a little bit, just with a, a little bit of an offset or, or thickness in and offset, just like this. Just so when we see the, the borders, we are not actually seeing anything. But see how now that looks like a really nice plate, like, a, like another piece that's uh, on top. Now we're going to do what I was <laughs> mentioning before with the, the diamonds. Let's do it real quick again. So just start with the plane. Rotate the plane minus 90 degrees so that it's facing us. Uh, grab all of the vertices. Edit mesh, chamfer, or yeah, edit mesh, chamfer. Where is it? Chamfer vertices, 0.5. Grab all of the vertices and uh, go into mesh tools or edit mesh uh, merge. And we'll grab one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Shift select everything else. There we go. Grab everything, control E, offset. Keep faces together off with a small offset. 
like that. Shift select everything off, and there we go. Those are our faces, or that's that's our objects, right? Oh, let's grab this guys, make them a little bit bigger. Let's go to the right view, position them where we're gonna be doing the boolean. So right about there. And of course, we need these pieces to have depth. So control E. And that's it. We're going to use this ones to cut through this plate. So one, the other mesh Boolean difference, A minus B. And as you can see, we get this. And that's it. We just uh, as you can see, this is the new uh, piece, we can just delete history, phrase transformation. And that's it. This is what people are going to see, right? Like, uh, um, we, we don't need to actually What's the word? We don't need to like smooth or fix or do anything because that's the that's the piece that people are gonna see. The one thing I'm gonna do to make sure that this is a little bit cleaner, I'm just gonna say mesh triangulate, so that we have triangles everywhere. But we're not gonna be smoothing this piece. This is one of the pieces that we we wouldn't smooth because if we smooth it, we're gonna lose that. And yes, technically there is a way to find like the proper topology, but it's just like <laughs> really really complicated. So I'm gonna say uh, mirror this to the other side, and uh, we have that nice little hole. The problem here is that we're not actually seeing it through the object, which might not be what we want. Uh, so what we normally do in this case is to, to make sure that this doesn't look as bad, is we add like a placeholder cube here on the inside, just to like symbolize all of the like inner patterns. That way we are going to get a little bit of a shadow, but we're not going to see through. So, so we would be able to see, again, something, but shouldn't affect the, the thing here. So right click, assign existing material, blend two, which was the dark one. And there we go. So that way we do see through it, but we're not gonna see like all of the inner mechanisms or anything. That's another one of the like the like the downsides of having things that you can like see through. And that's the fact that it, it gets a little bit tricky there. So yeah, uh, okay, we're we're in a we're in a good spot, I think. Um, now we're just missing the cables and we're missing the what's the word? We're missing The antenna. Let's do the antenna real quick. So I'm going to go to the right view. Again, we don't have a lot of information here. So I'm going to go a little bit more into a free, free form effect right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a cube. Get it there. Make it slightly smaller. There we go. A lot thinner. And uh, we don't see where this is, but I would expect this to be on the side of things. So probably right about there. Like there, that, that looks okay to me. I'm gonna add another edge loop here, and then I'm gonna like make this thing smaller so it doesn't go out of the frame as much. And now we can just bevel everything. One like this one, I think, could benefit from the nice little detail that we saw before. So we can add one of these guys. Control E. Very small offset, and then just push it in. So we see like a nice little like cut there, and then we can add a couple of support edges. It's gonna make it look a little bit nicer. And now we can do, here's a nice little trick. Because everything's very square, right? So we can add like one, two lines. And we can grab these vertices and just push them up like this. And since this is very square, right now it looks like a curve, right? But since this is very square, we can actually add like a couple lines on those like segments. And when we do this, we're gonna get that nice little like sci-fi cut right over there. I would probably add like a cylinder here on the side view. So right here. Just in case we you know need to turn or something. There we go. Looks good. 
it's a little bit off center let's move it closer there we go assign the same existing material the blame one let's clean things a little bit so let's uh, delete history let's save real quick just again before anything bad happens and look at that not bad right not freaking bad so yeah now let's go for the cables uh i think that's one of the last parts i mean we do have like a couple of like those little things on the plate we can add them i'm gonna add them like a uh, little screws here let's go to the right view so we have one on the back make it a little bit smaller like that a little bit bigger There we go. Control D, right about there. And then Control D, right about there. And we're gonna mirror this to the other side. There we go. All of those little details add up and they and then ma make things look really, really nice. Like on the back here, one thing that I normally see or I've, I've seen on, on this sort of things is that um, like the back plate is a different material. So I'm actually going to select this whole back plate and I'm going to do the same thing, edit mesh, and I'm going to separate or extract like this. And then this one, I'm going to assign the black material. There we go. And that's it. So now there are two different pieces. We can even like control E, extrude them out. And uh, we can grab like uh, this border right here and bevel it. So that it feels like uh, it's like a separate piece that... Uh, like just like attaches right there, right? So that will be that's gonna be where all of the cables are gonna be. Now for the cables, they seem to be ribbon cables rather than traditional cables, which is fine. You guys probably have uh, have uh, like seen uh, like laptop screens and stuff. They're just like ribbon cables, as you can see. Like uh, they're just like flat instead of uh, round. Uh, I mean, they're still round, but just just a lot of them together in, in like this sort of flatter. Instead of having like a really thick cable, you can like spread it out into a nice like flat uh, effect. So let's do the cables first, and then we'll do the connectors. And uh, for the cables, I can see that there's three cables coming from the uh, top, and then one cable going to the side. Uh, and all of them seem to be coming from this like section, this inner section. Most of them I would expect to be coming from this like uh, place right here. So so that's why having this flat area was really important. And then this one seems to be coming from like the side. Not sure where, again, that's the, that's where, <laughs> where the concept artists need to be a little bit more um, like precise on their, on their like explanations, uh, but we'll just have to figure something out. So uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the right view and, oh wow, wait, wait a second. This thing is facing forward. So when the camera rotates, see, that's another thing. Like right now, if the camera rotates, I lose all of the connections, right? Like everything breaks. Like the cables are not gonna be long enough to, to support the thing. So here's where we need to start doing some like artistic decisions is, are we gonna move everything then? Does that mean that we're, we're gonna have like this like the whole cylindrical shape move? I don't think so. This this does seem to be like welded in into the support. I, I still want this thing to move. But if I want the cables to remain like static, then maybe what's gonna be rotating is this thing right here. So I'm actually gonna make the decision to move this thing to the other side, to the back side, and then to the front, like this. So that when we rotate, everything rotates. So so maybe instead of having what we used to have, where, where this thing is gonna be the rotator, maybe the thing that's gonna rotate is this thing right here, like this shape right here. Uh, and that means that we do have to like push it or extract it actually. So I'm gonna grab this piece right here, all of these faces. I'm gonna say mesh tools, edit mesh, extract. This is not something that you always have to do, uh, or I mean, you, you should do it, but uh, Usually, again, the art director or the or the concept artist is gonna be like clean enough and this sort of things, so that you don't have to be thinking about like where and how things are gonna move. So, for instance, this thing right here, 
I'm going to center the pivot point and I'm going to do something called a mirror on the object y negative so we get the bottom part as well like a full right there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to because I do want to have a rotator so I'm going to grab this uh, thing right here and I'm going to say that this thing goes all the way to the back or to the bottom like this and let's change the color let's add the black color there we go so yes, we're gonna like rotate this thing. That that that, that would be my my animation point or the, the point where the joint would be. But everything is gonna rotate with it. Like all of this, like all of these things are gonna rotate with it. Okay. So now um, now we can go and do the the cables that we were uh, talking about. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go into create curve tools EP curve. I'm gonna start right here. And I'm gonna create a curve that goes right there. And this curve has uh, control vertices that we can modify. So I'm going to make this like fall into a more like interesting effect like that. That will be my first cable. And uh, again, I see three cables. So I would imagine there's going to be like one main cable. I'm going to say that that's the one. Actually, usually with like the power cable, usually, not always, but it usually goes to like one of the sides like this, like a big chunk right here. So I'm going to say that that's going to be this one. And then I'm going to um, duplicate this one, move it to the side. Maybe the connection point here is going to be higher. And over here, over here, we're going to have it to the side and up. Maybe that's like the data transfer point or something. And then we're going to have another one like down here. And it's gonna be living like on top here, like that. Cool, right? Now there's a very cool tool here instead of Maya 2023 and 2022, which is called the sweep mesh. It's this one right here, and it will sweep the mesh, uh, as you can imagine. I'm gonna say uh, four. The scale profile is gonna be a lot lower, and I'm gonna increase the precision, so we follow this thing a lot nicer. A lot less scale profile. There we go. We're going to rotate the profile so it's looking nicer. Let's say 45 degree angle. I really don't want taper. And let me see. Because right now, let's do rectangle. I think rectangle is going to look a little bit nicer. And this allows me... Yeah, there we go. So we can play with the width and the height. So let's do a width of like 10. There we go. See, like ribbon cables. And now we just uh, rotate the profiles. So they are getting or going as close as possible to, to how we need them, right? So something like that. Perfect. Now, the cool thing about this is we still have the curves. So if, for instance, we see a little bit of overlap on this curve right here, we can go into the control vertices and just like move it to the side. We can grab this guys. Rotate them a little bit. So for instance, since this is the one that's going lower, I definitely need to grab this guys and make this lower like this. There we go. So now grab all of those guys, delete history. And I will definitely go into the vertices here and just straighten them out a little bit. Let's get rid of the screen rotate. So they're as uh, straight as possible because, again, if they're supposed to be like ribbon cables, we want them to be going into their connection as nice as possible. Especially like this one that's like really crazy. There we go. I'm going to grab the curves and just delete them so we have clean effects right here. And there we go. We have this nice like ribbon cables going there. Now for the connectors themselves, I'm just going to keep it simple. So I'm just going to go with like a square uh, thing. And just get this in there. Usually with ribbon cables, there's going to be like uh, like the pin on the ribbon cable itself and then it attaches to like a base 
on the on the object itself. Give me just one second. So that's gonna be the uh, basic ribbon cable, and then I'm gonna control D to create like the base of the ribbon cable, like where this thing is actually gonna connect. And we can just grab both of them, double them, small fraction. There we go. Again, since this is a part that you're not gonna see as often, um, I, I don't think we need to like really like push this super intensely. But if you wanna spend a little bit more time on this, then feel free to uh, like get some reference because we don't have any information on the on the concept art. Get some reference and uh, and match it as close as possible to to the reference. this there we go so yeah you don't need to go like again overly complicate or you don't need to over complicate things especially for things like this that are I would call them uh, relatively simple now here um, I'm probably gonna have to move the insertion points a little bit so we get the <laughs> the proper connection If you need to add one more line and then you can just like push that line up a little bit and that's going to help you like keep the cable a little bit more straight just using a little bit of the curvature here to fix a little bit of the elements here i think i'm actually going to just keep one square to be honest because then otherwise it will be like really cramped And again, we can use the trick that I just showed you. Just add one line and use that line to, to make sure that the ribbon cable goes as cleanly as possible into the section. And there we go. One more line here. That's it. All of our ribbon cables are, are looking good. To be honest, I think I'm gonna skip this this one right here, the last one, um, just because it doesn't make sense to me that, uh, that we have like an extra cable right there. It looks uh, just a little bit off, to be honest. Probably want this one to be like dark. Uh, all of the ribbon cables, I'm gonna give them the dark color. And this guy's right here, I'm gonna give it the green color. Textures would make such a big difference, of course. We'll probably, probably do something like that later on, but uh, yeah. Actually, black doesn't look half bad. So cool, we are uh, we're pretty much done uh, for the with the modeling parts. I think I think we're in a really really good position. We don't have any UVs yet. That's gonna be um, again probably in another in another one of our classes. We're gonna have the the UV section. Um, but the, the modeling is looking quite, quite nice. So let's delete this image for now. I'm going to grab my camera right here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to delete history, first transformation, and everything. And I'm going to start like cleaning things up a little bit. So for instance, if I know all of these pieces are going to be moving in the same direction, I'm going to press control G to group them all. And I'm going to call this camera, camera main body GRP. And the pivot point of this group is going to be placed on the center of the rotator. That way, if I want to move the whole camera, this is what I would do. Right? We can, of course, like modify other things as well. Uh, but I want to have like all of them in, in the same thing. We have the camera support. This is the door. So it should be inside of the camera support. And then uh, what's this? P cube. I don't know. Let's delete it. 
And finally, this is a camera, let's call this camera anchor instead of camera support. And I'm gonna group this. I'm just gonna call this camera anchor group. And this is gonna be camera support group. Perfect. So the camera support, uh, it's not gonna move, but it's gonna be parented. This camera support group is gonna be parented to the camera anchor. And the camera main body is gonna be parented to the camera uh, support. So that's a, just a very basic rig that we can create here. And uh, especially this is gonna be really helpful to just like modify this thing right like this. Now uh, on the concept, I don't have the concept here anymore, but it doesn't seem like this camera can move like this, right? It's, it's just like uh, left and right. It probably has like a really like big angle uh, of vision. So I would expect this thing, I don't know. to have like a, like a really big cone of vision. But probably this would be one of those cameras in games where if you walk straight uh, beneath it, it wouldn't see you. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much it, guys. Now let's do a quick render because, of course, rendering is always a really good way to, to present your work. So um, we're going to do, let's save this real quick, and we're going to do just a traditional, uh, I would say, three-point light setup. So the cool thing is, even though Arnold is uh, not meant to be... Or it, it, it doesn't work as nicely with Maya materials. It will work with this like basic Lambert and Blinz. So we can just grab this guy. Uh, let's see what photo we have. Yeah, the decor shop. There we go. I'm gonna create a new camera. So rendering camera panels look selected. And for something like this, I'll probably go with a low focal length. So something like a 24. So we get a nice little like perspective here let's grab this guy and we're gonna say that we don't want to see it on the on the camera so zero quick trick I've, I've mentioned this before you can actually scale down the hdr to zero so that you don't see it and this is what you get let's turn this thing on this is going to be our effect and now what i can do is i can actually duplicate this a couple times and uh and have it be like a nice composition here. There we go. So we have three of these guys in this very, very nice composition. Cool. So now uh, if we were to just render, uh, it should work. Let's give the render just a couple of uh, seconds to, to um, work. Mm -hmm. Come on, render. You can do it. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Looking quite nice. Again, the materials are behaving a little bit weirdly, so let's clean this up very, very quickly. Uh, I'm going to delete the cameras, just because I don't want to do this like seven times. And uh, a very easy way to do this is I'm just going to grab everything. I'm going to sign a new material, and I'm going to sign an Arnold AI standard surface. And let's start with the green color. So I'm going to select this sort of like dark green color that we have. There we go. And on the roughness of the material, I'm going to increase it a little bit. Let's go here. I'm going to say render, update full scene, and render again. There we go. So that looks a lot cleaner. Nice, nice material. Now I am going to grab the, uh, like the black materials that I want. So it was this, 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 the ribbon cables, the main section there, all of this little blocks. I'm actually going to do the, the little door. I think it's going to look nice if we do like a black, a black door. Sign new material, Arnold, AI standard surface, and it's going to be a dark material, black material and very rough, almost matte. And finally, we're going to grab this guy, sign new material. Arnold, AI center surface, and we're gonna bring the base down and we're gonna bring the transmission up and the color of the transmission is gonna be this nice like blue color. Same for this one, assign new material. Arnold, AI center surface, bring the color down, bring the transmission up and we're gonna have a nice red color. Let's say uh, render, update full scene and that's it. 
now we're gonna get this thing looking more like a like a glass i like the red dots i think this blue is a little bit too bright so i'm gonna bring this more into like a dark blue and let's desaturate it cool nice i think we're gonna bring this back to to the green nice yeah that looks not that bad so now uh let's let's um which is something that we told you guys don't don't think that just because you have something cool here that that's it we can we can actually push it a little bit more so this is going to be the side view and this is going to be like the back view right here let's go back here panel to, to select it to make sure that our our composition works i like that one a little bit asymmetrical render this or you say render uh update full scene there we go so this looks good right i mean it's a it's a nice it's a nice render um i think the black is a little bit too matte so let's bring the roughness back there we go so we see a little bit more of a plasticky look and the hdr is definitely way too dark so i'm gonna grab this guy and on the exposure, let's bring this up to like a two. That ah, looks a little bit better. Maybe it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring this to one. There we go. That's a little bit more balanced. And uh, yeah. That's pretty much it, I think. I'm not sure. I don't love the render. Let's give it another go. Let's bring this back to zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to perspective. I'm gonna add an Arnold lights, uh, area light. It's gonna be disc, so we have an around, around effect. It's gonna be small, so we get a little bit more shadows. I'm just gonna like flood the scene here. So let's do like 15 exposure. Okay, that's good. Well, let's stop it. So 15 exposure looks good. It's a little bit too much, so let's bring this down to like a 13. There we go. I'm gonna use counter temperature and make this like a nice cold effect. Uh, yeah, I like that one. Maybe a little bit more. Let's try 14. More like a top light, so we get a little bit more shadows. And this is all about trial and error, right? Like we already have a really nice model. So we want to show it in the best possible way. That's not bad. That's a lot better. I like it. I'm going to duplicate this one, make it smaller, increase the exposure a little bit more, like quite intense and go for like a warm color. There we go. And as you can see, this is going to be like my, my rim light. So we're going to bring this to the side. There we go. A little bit more. Let's bring this back a little bit more. That's it. That's a lot better. I'm actually gonna make it bigger. Bigger gives us like softer, a softer effect. And I like this. I really like it. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the comments if you like the series. We're we're approaching the end of the series. As I've mentioned before, it's a long series. So thank you. Thank you very much to anyone that was able to complete this. Um, I know an hour and a half of, uh, of entertainment and content is not as uh, as easy to invest, but hopefully you guys like the series. Again, take it into steps. Don't try to do everything in a single go if you can't do it. Uh, just take it into steps and, and you're going to be doing uh, just fine. Uh, final thing that we need to do, of course, is we need to bring this to a full HD, which is a, a nice uh, size for a render. And on the elements here, I'm going to add the denoiser optics thing. This is going to give us a, a nice denoiser. That way we're not going to get as much um, well noise on our image. And we're going to get this very nice, clean render. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be your teacher throughout this class. Leave us a like, share, and subscribe. That always helps us. And if you want to check the full courses, I can recommend the Hard Surface course for Maya, where we cover all of these elements and more uh, in way, way more detail. So, thank you very much, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.